Fit for Life Radio, episode number 150. Your hosts, Gary and Will. What is up? Chatting it up today. Yucking it up. Yucking it up. Just going to go on a little little rant. Little kind of like a morning talk show, you know, where they just go back. What's that one with like all the ladies or used to be ladies? The View? The View, yeah. Like The View. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get a panel. Two more people. Whole panel. To, we're going to talk about today the how m- easy it is to be fear mongered with food. Just the whole nutrition and exercise space is mm-hmm. just full of it. And I want to say too, like I've been there too. Mm-hmm. I've been through it, been through the ringer. Yep. Before I really dove into a lot of the nutrition stuff and started really, really educating. When I started doing like the precision nutrition and other certs and courses and um it's easy like when i was in the early stages of my early 20s uh and you get into kind of the bro stuff you know the meathead stuff and like this is bad this is good and you just get caught up in it all okay you know or you just assume and and frankly a lot even a lot of what we knew back then in the early 2000s like they we've learned a lot Mm -hmm. right um so I know, and most of it revolves around like you end up restricting stuff because you, you like end up fearing something, right? Yeah, and you reduce everything down to this one little simple thing mm-hmm. and it's just dumb. Yep, and like for example, one was I know I went through a phase where, remember like the gluten-free phase? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, like gluten was going to destroy your yeah. body. And again, for we'll preface this like, you know, there is dairy intolerances. There is yeah, for sure. C- celiac disease and gluten intolerances, but no, you know... It, it's not everybody. <laughs> it's not everybody, right? And then w- the problem is if you don't have an intolerance to those things and you enjoy some of those foods and there's nutrition in them that you're missing out on, right? The more you understand this, the more things you try to completely exclude, the m- the more you're going to have to pay attention to your diet and harder it is. Because the more stuff you leave out in food groups, that means the more you know, each food group kind of has – maybe certain nutrients that are, mm-hmm. you get from those foods so that are harder to get elsewhere. So then it becomes tougher and tougher, right, to have a well-rounded diet, nutrition. And, and and know this too, you may make some changes when you make some of these drastic changes and you f- feel good right away. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to understand those principles why. Like a perfect one is like the carnivore diet, right? Well, you cut out almost everything yeah, except you cut, for meat, right? Like there's no processed food. There's no nothing. Yeah, but most people, what happens is, well, they cut out all that stuff. They eat meat. So they are getting, you know, the essential, some of the essential macronutrients we get. We need, we need, there's essential amino acids and essential fatty acids that we have to have. We can only mm-hmm. get from food. Well, meat does provide those, right? So we're getting those essential nutrients, but there's other micronutrition we're going to leave out. But ultimately... You cut out everything and only eat meat, and that helps you, say, lose weight. A lot of what those people feel, the benefit, it's not because they're not eating a million other things. It's because, well, it is, because they cut out those calories and they lost weight. Yeah. Right? And then they feel better and great. And they attribute it to, like, oh, well, it's just eating meat that makes yeah. me feel good. Or insert eating no meat or whatever it may be that you decided yeah. to go to. But it's to. typically to losing weight. Like losing weight makes you feel a lot better if you yeah. were if you were slightly overweight or obese, right? Um, on multiple levels, like your movement, your... Your mental you know, health. Yeah, your mental health. Your immune system is going to get better. Your energy levels, your, you know, there's a ton going on, right? Um, you know, they're finding out more and more how excess body fat becomes like a organ of itself and also it increases inflammation in the body right mm-hmm. so you lose body fat your infla- inflammation gets better in your body you feel better right so yeah you may notice some of those things at first but then long term you'll start to have deficiencies yeah those start to creep in like when it you know yeah kind of wears off and same thing when you look bad at all these trends in general the main theme is they help people lose weight and they feel better and that's why and then if you don't understand the mechanism you, you may then feel like, oh, this was this magic thing. Same thing with gluten, right? Mm-hmm. Look, or when peop- all of a sudden people start, stop, oh, I'm not going to eat gluten. Well, uh, well I lost, how I lost. much is gluten? Gluten's in so much. Exactly. So, and what is it also normally in? Kind of like more pro- processed, processed foods, stuff. So glu- you know, gluten. cookies and cakes and yeah. anything like that. And when you cut all that out. That's yeah. a lot of calories. Yeah, gluten's in wheat. Who's out here just eating like just wheat, straight up wheat? wheat stalks? No, we eat it. Some wheat thins. <laughs> we eat it in flour form, right? Yeah. So now all of a sudden you're just basically 
Well, flour form is like, yeah, like Will said, crackers and cookies and cakes. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, oh, I'm cutting out gluten. Oh, well, you just cut out basically all processed foods uh, that you probably snack on all the time. Yeah. Well, you, oh, you lost weight and you feel better. It's not because all those calories are gone, man. Yeah, it's because those calories are gone, not because gluten's gone, right? But then, um, so it's it's this real general rule that's cut and dry that can make it easy initially. But yeah. again, all that restriction down the road, you you know, you may be missing out on stuff, right? And and I know for me personally, so yeah, oh, because that was the hot thing, and like, and then you know, especially in the fitness industry, it's you can fall for like the real like halo effect and perfect. Yes, yeah, so, oh, these are like you know, bad foods, I'm, I'm going to be optimal. So yeah, let me cut out gluten, right? And then yeah, over time, you know what, I like, miss bread. Yeah, you know, or like one of my same if I was pushed for my favorite food, like single ingredient food, so not like dish, you know, like you say, you know, a cheeseburger, that's a bunch of components, right? But like one food item, you know, like, I'd be hard pressed for it not to be sourdough bread some real Ooh, good sourdough bread, I got, right? Yeah, and I, I, got, I, didn't, I got some at the house, yeah, mm. you know, and then you don't eat it for years. And another another one, too, is for me, um, and then th kind of the same time, the gluten was also like dairy. Yeah. Remember when dairy is just pus and inflammation yeah. from oh the my cow, right? God. Like just stuff. That's, that's what people said. Yeah. And like, this is not good for you. It, like, rots you from the inside or. Yeah. It, and, yeah, some people, uh, actually, a, a large portion of the global population do not tolerate dairy well. Yeah. Like, there's enzymes enzymes through like genetics and stuff that can make a difference yeah, people you, that are lactose intolerant it, yeah but if you can enjoy it eat you know consume it and you're you know process it and you're fine yeah th there's a lot of nutrition there there is now every every time i like drink a cold i think we've talked about this before now alexis feels different with like to me nothing is say you're like going and you're like playing sports right and you come back and you get some ice cold milk and just chug that puppy back so I need <laughs> that's like the most refreshing thing. I love a cool glass of milk after activity. It's got to be chocolate. Well, well, there's a weird, there's yeah, a weird yeah, distinction yeah, yeah. because like chocolate milk when you're hot and sweaty mm -hmm. just hits regular milk almost yeah. to me feels weird after yeah. doing a lot like like regular milk is yeah, going to churn in my hot body. <laughs> but the chocolate milk oh, is going to be fine. It completely makes no sense. Can you drink milk with ice in it? Ew, man, <laughs> I have, no, I don't bro. either. I'm not saying I'm on your Get side. Get some watered down milk. But I've seen people do it. I know. It's <laughs> sick. They're wrong. But anyway, so, yeah, I didn't eat these things for years. And would all in, in, and I loved them before this. And now I consume them now and greatly enjoy them. And you feel fine. And it's like, man, what was I doing for those, for those years? Yeah, right? depriving yourself of a um, cool glass of milk. So those are the main ones where I, I, I would like – I know I went through phases cutting stuff out. Yeah, those are I, the two for I me too. I didn't need to. I cut dairy out because it like clearly mm -hmm. made my face break out, and I did a lot of like testing with eating things. Mm -hmm. And now it's fine. So yeah. whatever it was, like so I it, can eat dairy, and you know we change over time. And one thing you know, people have to understand is our body, our stomach, our system, it adapts, right? It mm -hmm. can adapt to like – enzymes that break stuff down so Absolutely. yeah if you don't ever consume dairy you start lacking the enzymes, and then you have a glass of milk or something with dairy you, you may not have like your body not used to it right so mm -hmm. you may have negative effects but then if you want to have it you kind of do it consistently your body can kind of have a little shot of milk every yeah, day get better at yourself processing up. it yeah and you won't have issues right so um you know, th those are some things I never, I think I, I never got into like the vegan vegetarian, maybe like mm -mm. one month. I remember I did it. I remember there's an article in men's fitness and it had like a meal plan and you know, all the, and I, I just, I, I never did it. I couldn't do it. Mike, my, do it. Like my brother did it for a few years. Just eating beans and, and stuff, man. Like if yeah. some, it would always feel incomplete, right? Yeah. Personally. Like where's the rest of my meal? <laughs> you know, and, and again, you, people can make that work. Um, you know, it's more for like we've talked about in past episodes you know ethical and environmental reasons yeah. like most people even now and even everyone on the up and up even like real stout veg vegans and vegetarians know now hey like you don't do this as a number one priority health move um it's probably you know you you have these other reasons um, which may trump it which is fine it's because there's again like we said it makes it very very hard like you can make a vegan diet and vegetarian diet be extremely healthy you have to have more food knowledge and pay more attention. And it takes a lot more work. It's harder, yeah. 
So it's completely doable. Yep. Um, but yeah, so like it's like juggling all these things, and so then and you're people afraid. Get afraid, right? And you could even look. So we can take a plate or a meal, and it's all been fear mongered. You can mm-hmm. find an article on the internet telling you everything on your plate. Don't is eat. Gonna, don't <laughs> eat carbs. Is bad, right? Yeah. And then so, it's like, well, there goes my rice or potato. Yeah, you could have you know chicken breast with broccoli, uh, a baked potato, um, and a little butter on your baked potato. Yeah, and there's gonna be an article about well, why meat will kill you. There's gonna be an article about why carbs are bad and there's why a, we don't need to eat vegetables. <laughs> and then yeah, now and then there's people who are crusade against vegetables. So you end up with a plate full of ice, yeah. right? But then someone's gonna be like, oh, that's ice is from tap water. Yeah, there's, tap flo- <laughs> there's fluoride in that in that ice, and it's bad for you. Yeah. So now you're just like sitting here. I guess I'll just die then. <laughs> you know. Drinking your spit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you do at that point? Uh, just drink a cool you know? G and of you milk. you step back and it's just like, it's wild, man. Yeah. And, but that's what people are up against is, you know, you hear all the time, they're like, oh, this food is bad. It's bad. It's mm-hmm. bad. It's bad. So in your head, you're like, yeah, this shit's bad. I'm never eating this ever again. And, and then you're afraid of it. And that right there is the crazy thing. And then if you, you truly believe that and you have this fear, well, guess what? Like your mind... And stomach. You're going to have a stress response to that food. Yeah. There's a strong connection, right? So if you think something's bad for you, because that's an evolutionary trait that keeps us alive, right? If you ate some ba- poisonous berry the first time and it made you have diarrhea and throw up. You're and not eating it again. Bring you to the brink of death. Like now you see that berry, you want to have this stress response yeah. and be like, oh, am I eating that yeah. again? Uh, so because so you almost you do that to yourself when you're mm-hmm. afraid of food. If someone's told you gluten will kill you and you eat a slice of bread and while you're eating it you're stressed the entire time you're digest and then you're like oh yeah it is bad My your di- digestion is gonna be terrible yeah it's because you were stressed while eating it right so the mind mo- if you tell yourself these things it's like that- a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. type thing yeah but if you can learn to relax think about the nutrition that's in different foods uh and eat what you enjoy um and eat with hey i want to have as much variety over food groups as possible Mm -hmm. because it makes it easier to have a nutritious diet then i mean that's the way right and then yeah then yeah if things bother you or there's uh, you know complications yeah or you notice like hey maybe i just don't digest this as well Mm -hmm. great like play around with it but don't feel like this is going to kill me you might just find like hey this just doesn't agree with me as much as something else does yeah just because yeah who knows that's the hard part you, man. you know another big one is you people fall into the trap of, um, like, chemicals. Oh, Don't eat chemicals. God. Right? We were watching this video where some, you know, so some person's, like, bashing. Oh, there's chemicals in all our food. There's chemicals in our in our lotions and in our foods. And I'm going to make this, like, wholesome meal that's chemical-free. And it was, like, blueberry banana muffins or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the reality is, like, everything is made up of chemicals. Yeah, it's just such a dumb re- – Reductionist you, thing to say. Yeah, if you paid attention in chemistry class in eleventh grade, everything is a chemical, right? So, you know, where people are like only eat things with ingredients you can pronounce. Well, luckily, like Whole Foods, like banana, chicken, you know, things like that, broccoli. Like, like the name is simple. Of the food. they 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 don't have to put the chemical makeup of those foods on the ingredient list, right? Because yeah. that's how they're naturally found. Like and imagine the, all of the amino acids and everything, and and chicken and the enzyme. Like no one will be able to pronounce that. Yeah. They're all and there's and and there's chem, they're chemicals, right? So, and here's the thing: so if you're based off of like chemicals are bad or like natural versus unnatural, right? And you're oh, that's to, a whole nother one. You're trying to dis- oh, it's natural. Yeah, okay. you're trying to use that to decide whether you're gonna if something's good or bad to eat. Well, there's, there's natural chemicals that will kill you. There's a lot of natural stuff that's really awful. Yeah, you know, there's poisons. There's like cyanide's mm-hmm. a big one. Ricin, like. They're naturally occurring, yeah. But like, they'll kill you, dude. Straight up, there's nothing good about them. H two O. Yeah. You drink too much water, you'll die. Yeah. So like, you know what the funny one is? It always gets the free pass. Is is alcohol? I know. If you listen to this podcast, you know how we feel. <laughs> like, there's a perfect example. It's of, like, just straight up poison. You you and and we both drink. So we're not saying like we're not on some high yeah. horse here, but like it's like you yeah you it's a perfect example of. The dose is the poison too, mm-hmm. right? Well, really, any dose of alcohol. Well, and is they, you get people that are so wrapped up in like, oh, chemicals, and I can't mm-hmm. have hey. toxins, hey. and like you're just drinking a bottle of poison every hey. night. Alcohol. L- listen to this, and this is we're not saying everyone, but this is a general thing, right? Think about this. This how we've we've shaped this in our mind. People will be like, I'm not drinking a diet soda because it has sucralose, right? Mm-hmm. And sucralose is a chemical, and it's bad. And it's going to give you But think about cancer. it. No one, there's n- zero documented death 
or connection to any kind of thing. Sucralose poisoning or anything. In, in humans ever. Like you could just drink, sit here and drink 16 diet sodas and you're going to be fine. But then people will wrap that in their mind. And then they'll go though and be like, and drink three glasses of nine a white, uh, three glasses of wine a night, or you, you know, binge drink on the weekends, and but be like, oh, this has a uh, high polyphenols, you know, or this is good. Resveratrol. Uh, so, yeah, I saw this article is good for my health, and like, and then there's literally, like, I, I'm not sure exactly, and we don't have it pulled up, but I know it's like the third or fourth or fifth. Literally, alcohol is one of the top yeah. killers in the co- in the world. In the world. In the country, right? So like. We can die from consuming too much alcohol poisoning from its effects in car wrecks and things like that. It literally kills people, but it gets this free pass and someone will will drink, but then they'll like oh turn their nose turn up their nose chemicals up to some to some super and low. toxins and right? all this stuff. Like and, and here's the thing with a lot of these artificial sweeteners, right? This is where yeah, most people just don't understand. Well, first of all, like everything the the this planet, this earth, like it, it something came from somewhere right so yeah. typically most artificial sweeteners are like derivatives from like amino acids right and they're artificial because they're not in their natural like state that they were found in right like you get some chicken breast there's a bunch of amino acids in it correct then you can now we have the science to then break down some you know those individual amino acids and like some of some amino acids can kind of have a sweet taste right so then you you break it down it's going to be not in a caloric form because it's broken down so much, but then you then you have it all together and it's this can be this like artificially kind of sweet taste, mm-hmm. right? But it's not sugar, it's not a carbohydrate, it's from an amino acid. And yeah, so that's technically artificial sweetener again, but it still came from something that mm-hmm. was natural. So I just read sucralose is actually just made from sugar. Yeah. So they basically just like take part of sugar out. Mm-hmm. What's the one? I know there's one that comes from a, like a really sweet amino acid, which is mm. amino acids or protein. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it was, I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. It's the aspartame. Aspartame, okay. Aspartame yeah, yeah. is made of two naturally occurring amino acids, phenylalanine mm-hmm. and aspartic acid. Yeah. So it's like that right there, that's considered an artificial sweetener, right? Yeah. But it's it's from just two amino acids. So one of the amino acids is just slightly modified and then it, mm-hmm. that's it. And then, you know, the fear, maybe, yeah, if we consume, it, and let's even say maybe this, hey, just, there's an amount you can consume it in that becomes problematic. But guess what? That's the, that's the truth about anything. Anything. If yeah. You, like if we put a, 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 you know, dangerous dosage warning on, mm-hmm. like everything's going to have it yeah. at some point for some reason. And just knowing that, you know, if the dangerous dose of, we'll say aspartame is 200 diet sodas, who's drinking in a day? Mm-hmm. Like there's no one's coming close to that. Or yeah. it might even be like a thousand. Like no one's even getting close to that and realizing that we're going to process that one yeah. or two sodas very quickly. And then it's generally I mean, out of our body and, and done. You could probably 
try eating 200 apples in a day. Yeah. You're probably going to explode yeah. explode from fiber, right? Exactly. Like end up with a, You're going to get clogged up. Like, yeah. So people like. I'm or, hey, drink, drink five gallons of water and see if you don't have yeah. some real serious complications or not. Hyponatremia, you will, for sure. So it, it just understand that, you know. It, it's not. And then, hey, let's, let's look at alcohol. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, alcohol is a just legit poison. Our body processes it, you know, and there's a dosage that, hey, if you drink too much and like it will literally kill you. Mm -hmm. If you have one drink in a day, you're going to be fine. Your body, you're going to digest it and it's going to be okay. Yeah. So think about, you know, everything in that realm, because if you're Mm -hmm. drinking alcohol, but worried about the artificial sweetener in your Coke, then or think about you can even break it down even further. You're worried about the artificial sweetener in your Coke, but you drive a car to work every day. Mm hmm. That's a way risky. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's just wild how somehow with we in just this pinpoint world, on these little things. Yeah, and the logic just doesn't stand. It doesn't nah. stand. Nah, it doesn't make sense. Like you're 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 worrying about you know pebbles when, but not mm-hmm. worried about the giant boulders. And again, we just talk about the doses and the poison with anything. Like yeah, and now let's come back to well, everyone wants to have a villain, right? Why are we getting worse health? You know, America, like our lifespan's getting shorter every year, the mm-hmm. last like 15, 14 years. And like, what are the, pro- you know, these problems and there's a bag. Of- it's ultimately because most people are over consuming calories. And most people look at the percentages. Yeah. What, like 70% of people are Obese. overweight. And hey, it causes problems, right? Like there's health issues that, and consequences to, to this overconsumption mm-hmm. of food. There's no one specific Food. Prob- like bad guy. It's uh, now don't get me wrong. Like when we combine all these things, like take a, you know, bag of Doritos with all these ingredients, they are combined t- to make it taste great so that they can and easy so to over consume. You eat more chips and then buy more chips mm-hmm. and then sell more chips. Right. For sure. So that is a thing. But it's not it's your responsibility to figure out a way to portion these things. Right. And mm-hmm. to to educate and bring bring awareness to what we're doing so that, you know, when you bring the awareness and eat the proper overall intake, you don't have to fear these individual things nope. um, because, you know, you're kind of taking care of what matters the most, which is the dosage, so to speak, mm-hmm. of it. we'll say food in general. Right. Yep. Um, and again, by then, including as many food groups as possible. You're going to consume more nutrients. Yeah, you're right? going to have a lot of crossover and, and make sure all your bases are covered. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good idea for most people instead of just eating only one. Yeah. or cutting out a whole or entire food groups yeah. yeah and then you know deeper dive another another podcast but like a common one that you know a lot of people we hear like carbs has become like a synonym for bad yeah. food like oh i gotta like because we have the our group fat loss secrets for busy adults and when people join there's like hey what's your biggest obstacle question you know just to get to know and people carbs and the most common thing people say is like sweets carbs you know and and, and the tone is like this like yeah, th- these are bad things. These are these are tripping me up, right? When the reality is just that, and then you ask people, what do you mean when you say sweets and carbs? And it's typically like uh, cake. pizza, cake, cookies, donuts, donuts. And well, guess what? These aren't just carbs, right? Nah. They're just high calorie foods. They again, carbs and fats yeah. for the most part. So overconsumption, right? And you don't even have to eat that much of them. And that's the thing: people feel like aren't eating much, but they they are consuming a lot of calories, right? So um, and then but then. Well, then you'll see, well, rice is a carb and, and uh, White fr- potatoes. fruit is a carb. Well, then they get slumped in with that other stuff. But the reality is those foods, you pull up the satiety index. Way fr- higher. Fruit, potatoes, they have th- some of the highest. So they actually help you eat less calories overall, and you get to eat more of them. Because you're more full. Because they're just carbs. They're not necessarily high-calorie, high-density foods. Mm-hmm. So then you end up avoiding them all, right? Well, also, there's hormonal and metabolic consequences for a lot of people, right? Like carbs are anti-stress. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're naturally anxiety and stress driven, um, they can help balance, kind of balance that. Yep. The brain chemistry and stuff that goes on with like serotonin and so all that. So eating carbs through your day can actually be a very big benefit, mm-hmm. you know, especially in the fast paced, yeah. overstimulating world we all live in. Like we kind of need something to balance that out a little yeah. bit. And you can lose weight and maintain a, you know, healthy weight consuming carbs Mm -hmm. right so once you realize that and that's more just about your overall portions and intake and you don't need to exclude these things yeah now you get the benefits of having them in your diet and you're not Um, afraid of eating something mm -hmm. which then like will said comes back to like well just that fear alone that we instill in our brain 
can cause some of the digestive distress mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, and then and then you're reinforcing that like, yeah, this is bad. Um, so you know, you almost created this intolerance to a food. Mm-hmm. Mm. You see, you see. I mean, we're passionate about this because we've been there, it's right? The like I man. know, like we said, I've avoided favorite foods, right? Yeah. Now I consume them. Like, why did I do that? And we see it with everyone we meet with. You know, we do strategy sessions in person at the gym. Mm -hmm. We do them online for our nutrition coaching. Everyone typically um, Most comes with like, hey, I, I, I cut this out or I need to cut this out or this is the problem. This is and um, it's always there's like a villain. Nine out of ten people, because I do, you know, a lot of the, the onboarding, it's like carbs. Like, oh, yeah. I've got to cut out carbs. Carbs, I don't do – the most common thing I hear, oh, car carbs don't agree with me. Mm -hmm. What does that even mean? Yeah. That but doesn't even mean anything. Yeah. Like, you've just overconsumed food, most likely more processed stuff, and have decided that those are all carbs, and because they make you gain weight, you can't eat carbs yeah. ever again. And here's the thing, right? Like, you take cookies, chips, you know, things that, like pizza, all these things. They're also very convenient, right? Like that's mm -hmm. the bigger thing. You know, we talk about our environment. So the reality is, unfortunately, the foods that taste the best and are highly, uh, you know, caloric are also the most convenient. They're ready. And then, yeah, I get it. When we talk about oats and rice and fruit and lean protein, dang, you're thinking, yeah, that, that chicken's sitting in that wrapper raw. Yeah, the oats are sitting in that container. You can't eat them like that. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, you could, <laughs> but um, so now you start to see. Well, there's a the barrier. There's a there's huge, a barrier. There's a huge barrier. They're not convenient, right? So, I mean, the reality is that's the biggest step for people. Is yeah, like it's very hard to consume the appropriate amount of food with processed foods because they're convenient and easy to overeat. And you're not going to be full from them. Largely. And then the stuff that's going to help you be where you need to be is inconvenient. So you got to get over that hump, that priority to where, you know what, you're probably going to have to prepare some of these things. You're probably going to have to prioritize buying them from scratch and mm -hmm. cooking them and prepping Going them. Going to the grocery store. And that takes a lot of change for people. You it know? does. But there's, a, there's, there's ways to make it simple, though, mm -hmm. right? One of the most common ones is people will think, like, oh, i got to do this, this, like, real drastic long recipe. And then you spend yeah. an hour and a half cooking one meal. When in reality, dude, I'm telling you, you could cut that down so much. I mean, I know it's cliche, like chicken and rice, but... I can take my chicken, you know, five pounds, throw it in the crock pot, mm -hmm. cook it up, shred it. Now it's ready. Rice, rice cooker in the morning, get the rice humming. Then it's in the pot. And then, dude, m then hitting it with some sauce, some barbecue sauce, some ca like whatever. It's, it's like so easy, so simple. It took, I mean, you, it, it's hard, right? Because it's hard, like cooking the chicken took 12 hours technically, right? Yeah. But the reality is I took the chicken out of the pack, put it in the crock pot at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. after we finished dinner. Yeah. And then went to bed. Poured some some <laughs> uh, stock on it, went to bed, woke up. It's literally, oh, it's done. Took it out, put it in a huge container, took two forks, shredded it up. Literally, w I would say 45, but say that's one minute. It took one minute to put it in the pot, one minute to take it out and shred it up. It's red. And then it's like this base that you have a lot of options to do with. Yeah, you can season it up differently. Dude, so you can combine it with other two foods. Two minutes. It took two minutes. And yeah. now that's, you know, for say I use that for one or two meals a day for five days. Um, you know. You there, saved a lot of time. There's your lunch for the week, right? Mm -hmm. Now, yes, there's trade-offs. Oh, you like to eat something different every day? Okay, well, you know, that may not and be And you might have way. to do then something you, different you every day. Another strategy. But the point is there's ways where you, you only need a couple ingredients. It will taste good. Um you just got to work at it a little. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part mm -hmm. is like, and I think not everyone's taught how to cook. Like yeah. sometimes you have to teach yourself and that is daunting because you're like, I don't want to ruin this food. I don't, you know, want yep. it to be bad. And so I understand that. But starting with something like a crock pot, like unless you leave it for like two days, like you're yeah. not messing that up. Unless, it, but and then we can tie it back to the original thing. You can take this meal that I eat often, like basically meat or so we'll say chicken, rice, and I put, for example, yesterday for lunch and ketchup on top of it. Some people be like, oh, but I thought meat was bad and uh, rice is bad. And, oh, ketchup has sugar in it. And I got it. There's literally a thing where people get so fear-mongered with sugar 
They're like, I need to make sure there's not even one gram of sugar in my entire day. Yeah. And it's like, in the, again, in the context of a appropriate overall intake, there's nothing bad about sugar. Nah. Now, it's not very nutrient dense. So if no. majority of your diet consists of sugar, you're not getting a lot of micronutrition. Yeah. And you might feel kind of garbagey. If yeah, that's a, that's a problem. Um, but, but how many people are just free base and sugar you <laughs> yeah. know just taking spoonfuls of white sugar like, no one's doing yeah. that you know now unfortunately some people are just like barely eating and drinking you know 14 sodas a day that's all yeah um, no well, that's a good point so but again so, soda's not just sugar right it's you're getting it's the carbonated water which has a texture hit and then it's also the artificial flavors and things like that and combined that, that and again not saying like pain from the they're carbonation not that mm. they're bad because they're artificial it's that all these things are combined to make it taste amazing and it's easy to over to yes. over consume but again anyways back to yeah the, the ketchup and so, yeah, so people could pick that meal apart so when you oh well if i'm not going to use sauces now because there's three grams of sugar well they oh, oh well yeah these ca- carbs are bad right like so i can't have there, rice there goes the rice um and now maybe yeah you're stuck eating yeah if i had to eat chicken and lettuce leaves i'd hate my life i'd hate my life right <laughs> so, so that's an extreme you know now it yeah I'm, now that i'm gonna end up having a cheeseburger french fries yep. and while i'm there yeah let me get the double gulp right mm. so like just stop fearing food and you eliminate so so many so many issues obstacles yeah you have to understand it's okay to eat you want to embrace it you want to feel yourself that's what you're learning not you're not trying to don't think of Eating, dieting as I'm trying to starve myself. Think of it as I'm trying to learn how to fuel myself. Mm-hmm. That's it. And realize that all food has some quali- some quality to it, right? Even sugar, right? Well, someone's six foot four, 260 pounds, athlete, pl- playing in a, a practicing and lifting seven days a week. Like they need. They may need 5,000 calories just to maintain their weight to support their activity. Well, guess what? Like it's hard to do not eating maybe some things with sugar. Having some Skittles yeah, or something. Yeah, you know? So it's like, hey, if they're already having, you know, a pound of meat and three stalks of broccoli and uh, two cups of spinach and – Yeah, and they're covering four, all their nutrients. four bases. pieces of fruit. Like, again, you don't get an award for having the most nutrients, you, you know. So yet they may just then at that point need calories, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, like the nutrients are covered and – I can't can't eat any more chicken breast, yeah. so let's just put some easy yeah. stuff in. So in that person is arguably a superfood. It helps them not lose weight that they're not trying to lose. Mm-hmm. You know, it helps them do what they're trying to do. So in the context, every food has a, has a place, yes, right? It does. So yeah, sugar's not literal poison. Mm-hmm. I hate that. That one drives me up the wall. Yeah, like there's nothing good about sugar. Yeah. It's just terrible for you and it's like, poisoning eh. you. It's like cocaine. People compare it to cocaine. Jesus You're like, really? Christ. Really? It's so addictive. <laughs> Is it addictive? And again, it comes back to, are you eating yeah. spoonfuls of sugar? Or are you eating okay. processed foods yeah. that are engineered with fat and yeah. flavors to taste oh, amazing? So yeah, you're not addicted to sugar. You're addicted to... This combination of things that the food company made to be addictive. To be so a pleasurable it's not, experience. It's not even like wrong or bad. It's just really hacking our brain. Yeah. And our, si- our system, right? So, um, and you just have to bring awareness to that and take responsibility. Yeah. Um, so sugar's not this poison that's just has no benefit yeah. and no standing to exist in our universe. Mm. It's all right. What are so it's like sugar and chemicals and gluten? Chemicals. And well, for a while, dairy, fat was a big yeah, fat one. back in. So now, yeah, it's funny. It's like eat all eat all the fat and carbs are bad. And then in the nineties and stuff, in eighties, it was like fat's bad. Low the low right? fat the craze. Low fat, and then you know <laughs> it's wild. It's just gotten real terrible since then. And you know, and even the carnivore diet has its place in the sun now. And you can someone shared an article from like some publication back in like nineteen oh seven where some crazy doctor was like everyone's you know whatever problems they were having then he was like it's because people just need to eat just meat right so it's like it's not even new nothing's new nah, just um, gets recycled like maybe just eat a little bit of everything yeah we'll be good that's fine in the r- appropriate amounts yeah and realize hey you know what these foods that i'm addicted to are really just a product of modern engineering and they're good that's the thing that's the thing that gets me is 
people go on this high horse like this out to get you and, or that you, you just need to go and only eat these X foods and a limit. But that's for most people, that's not going to be a reality. No. Nope. Like we are in this modern environment. Yeah. No one's unless going you're going to live, to live in, the in the woods. So you need to learn how to live with it. Right. You're, you mm-hmm. may have kids and you're going to, have to be a, at social events and this is what's available or in like. If it's always off limits, then when it's available, you go hog wild, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to learn to reframe that so that you can manage these things. Yeah. Or you're gonna like, be you're gonna be navigating this and not avoiding yeah. it. Yeah, that's just the reality. It's, so it's crazy. It's like literally saying, I mean, the same thing would be like, cars are engineered. F- they're this modern thing. I'm not going to drive anywhere. I'm but not. the reality is like, depending on where you live, it's almost no, or we'll even let's say modern transportation, car, train, plane. So if you're going to be like, no, that's not natural. That's that's not, you know, it's modern and engineered. Yeah, it's engineered to help us get places faster, but there's risk that comes with it, right? Yeah. Um, we're going faster, higher speeds equals more disaster. So same thing. Yeah, these foods are engineered to give us calories in bunches, but hey, more calories at once per bite means it's easier to consume more. So it's kind of like driving faster. There's more consequences. Mm-hmm. So instead you of but, keep that in check. but we don't just say, don't drive. I'm never driving. You just drive what the do we speed do? limit yeah, we'd be, and you follow hey, the rules. Be and, aware. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. Like have these boundaries. Mm-hmm. You have guardrails. Yes. You, have, you have rules. Same thing with diet. You can't just go out there willy nilly. Yeah. Flooring it every day. And then being like, on, like most people yeah, actually do. Can you most people are just hot rotting and, everywhere with their then, diet. And then what people are trying to do is the answer. So, oh, yeah, it's gluten's fault, right? Or it's not, it's this chemical in this food's fault. That would be like getting a car wreck. And be like, oh, that was the gasoline, man. <laughs> that be like that. It. That, uh, I don't even know a car part, man. I'm trying to think of like an obsolete car part. <laughs> it was the alternator that yeah. made me go fast. Yeah, that alternator. I'm going to, um, you know, sue the alternator. Yeah. The, I'm going to take that alternator out. Let's take that alternator out of the car. Yeah. That was the, that was, that was the problem. That was the problem. You like, know, nah, it's like, you were going 150. Well, no, it's just that <laughs> th- this car was engineered to be super fast, and then there's uh, 40,000 other ones on your road, and then it was, uh, you know, nighttime, and there's more, in it, you know, so it's funny, just like food, right? Yeah. Nah, man, you're gaining, you're not gaining weight because of uh, that sucralose. You're gaining, you know, you're, gaining eat, weight you're eating you this eat. calorie dense food at night when you're bored, and there's, you know, 45,000 different flavors, and yeah. so an endless palate. Uh, yeah, not the sucralose options. that's in your Gatorade Zero yeah. that's making you gain weight. So, yeah, you got to learn how to live in that modern environment. Yeah. Yeah. Stop Maybe. being afraid of stuff. Yeah. Cars ain't going nowhere. Doritos ain't going nowhere. Uh, dur- but guess what? You can have some Doritos. You could. Hey, you can drive a car. What's your Dorito flavor? I haven't had Are you a cool, a ranch? Are you a cool ranch guy? So you, so, you know what? Not. I like the cool ranch, but the aftertaste and the breath that it produces. Yeah, I don't like those. I, like, that's weighs, that weighs too much on the scale. So I, I I probably just like the regular. Traditional is good. Yeah, nacho cheese. They have like a spicy one that isn't half bad. Yeah. It's in a purple bag. So here's the thing with spice, right? Spice is like, um, we talked about like the enzymes. You know, if you don't ever eat something, mm-hmm. you can't adjust. So Did you tell me you got a weak mouth. I got a weak mouth. Yeah. And, but then Soft. I'm like, you know what? I just can't. So, but I know if I ate more spicy yeah, food, you'd be fine. You'd I would adjust adapt it. and be able to handle you it. You just don't want to deal with but it. But I don't want to go over that. So it's almost like I've accepted that I have to avoid spicy food. You just got to eat white bread because, the rest of your life. <laughs> because I never <laughs> just uh, salt and black pepper. Yeah. Oh, is that paprika? That's, <laughs> that's spicy, man. That's spicy. They're not overly spicy, but those are those are good. But yeah, no. traditional Doritos are hard to beat. They're um, just solid. I can't remember. I don't know the last time. It may have been like a cookout or you something. You know what's pretty good? Just talking about modern engineering. The good thing now is, yeah, what is bad, you know, or what, I don't, what makes processed food, like we said, it's engineered to taste amazing. Well, now, though, as we learn more, there's foods engineered to kind of then combat that, right? So you have like Quest, which makes, so we know like higher protein, higher fiber mm-hmm. is more satiating, fills us up on less calories. So you're getting these companies making foods engineered to, but to taste, have kind of have those taste flavor profiles, but- Hey, they're higher protein, higher fiber, less calories, yep. and e- make it easier to manage our intake, right? So yeah, instead of having Doritos, if you know you're like get sad that you count out seven of them, <laughs> hey, there's a bag of Quest Doritos, and you might be able to eat fifteen or, or Quest chips. Yeah, and they're like Doritos, and you, yeah, you could have the whole bag, right? And mm-hmm. it's higher in protein, things like that. And the other thing, people w- would complain that well, they're really expensive. I would almost say that's part of the benefit too, because yeah. now you're just not going to buy as many. There's a higher barrier. Um, so, yeah, there's stuff like that, right? Uh, and they're actually pretty good. So 
I don't think I've had those. The Quest chips are good, man. I've heard from multiple people that they're pretty good. I'd, so I've even taken them and like grounded them up and then use them as like chicken crust, you know? Breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. Mm. Little egg wash. Little breadcrumb. Little bakage. Mm. There you go. I like a good breadcrumb. Nacho cheese. Dorito crumbs. Nacho cheese. Let's see. Let's. Is there? I know there's got to be a ranking of Doritos. It's so subjective, though. It's gonna be like ice cream. You're always amazed when you pull up ice cream rankings, and vanilla is always still like number one. Mm-hmm. And you're like, but think of all the times you go out to ice cream. Who? No one ever gets vanilla. Mm-hmm. But I guess everyone, everyone's at home eating vanilla or something. Someone's getting vanilla. <laughs> Damn, they got sev- 17 ranked. I think this is just the rankings of each individual site, but we can go through it. I'm just curious of the flavors I'm not aware of. Bro, there's a lot. What's number one? Ooh, hey, number one. You looking at on Thrillist? No, nah, I'm on Mashed, bro. Mashed, that was the second one. So... Jacked. Do they <laughs> they got protein in them? Doritos jacked. Look at that old bag of Doritos. Like the the throwback. Classic. Yeah. Nacho cheese. Oh, I hear it. Uh, uh, salsa verde Doritos. Oh, That's probably good. All right, all right. Dynamita chile lemon. Mm. Let's let's get down here to what the top top five. five. I mean, see see these are all ones. Yeah, you could tell one hitter like the ranch dipped hot wings. Like, come on, man. Come on, bro. Let's dig in too deep. So this one, hey, what, what, the simply organic white cheddar Doritos? Nah, they're not. <laughs> Stop. Come it. on, man. Sweet spicy chili. Those are the ones I was talking about. They're the uh, oh, you know the, the purple bag. Uh, you know the ones I really like. Are they Doritos or maybe they're like tortilla chips, like the lime flavored chips? Mm, I think those are just tortilla chips. Hint of yeah. lime. All right, so here we are, top five. Number five. See now I got to go to the grocery store. Sweet spicy chili Doritos. Have you ever had those? I literally just told you those are the ones I like. Oh. Eh. <laughs> those are the purple bag, bro. Those are good. It's like I'm married to you. Yeah. You, you just, speak and it just... It just in one yeah. ear, out the other. Bounce Man. off your headphones. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about those. Those are good. Enhance the eating experience. Then we have... Yeah, this this is wild right here. The number four. You say it. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm not on this. Which one are you on? Mashed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dynamita. Chile lemon Doritos. Nah, man, that's not lemon. Like limon. There we go. Limon Doritos. Diego's gonna be upset with me. I know. Me. Um, oh, so this is their attempt to get in on the. They're like takis. Yeah, takis. That's a, that's what they reminded me. They're of. and they're rolled. That's interesting. yeah. So they're not like actually a Dorito. Yeah. Well, they're a Dorito, but they're rolled. Yeah. All right. So number three. Okay. Cool Ranch Doritos. Classic. If you like having weird breath all day. Number two. The old nacho old cheese. Old reliable. Old Dur- just cheese. a Dorito. Orange fingers. Mm-hmm. Number one. Number one's interesting. Cause wow. I, that, that, mu- that means these must be legit. Tapatio. The Tapatio Doritos. So it's basically like hot sauce. Yeah. Never had those. Yeah, I, I've never even seen those. Low heat, so that works. The red peppers. Mm. Okay, all right. There we go. So there's your Doritos. So that's just a little fun fact for you all. What about 3D Doritos? What are they like? Different uh, experience. A crypto Dorito. <laughs> you don't actually eat them. <laughs> <laughs> you just get to know they exist somewhere. 3D. What are you, they like? Puffy. You never had 3D? No. Nah. Are they puffy or something? Yeah. Here. Like a corn chip. Like this is the best. Like picture. a puffy corn puff. It's like a puffed okay, up Dorito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they just give. It's a little fun because yeah. it's some uh, different texture, you know. All right. See. So. So yeah. Don't fear food. Or chemicals, or, or chemicals. Don't like drink I'll Drano just, or anything. But <laughs> well, there you, go. yeah. Know um, the dangerous ones. <laughs> <laughs> the doses and the poison, right? Yeah. Like natural chemicals are in snake venom. Yep. And if you consume it, you'll die. Right. Will's drinking a Gatorade Zero, which has what, what is it? Sucralose. I think it is sucralose or aspartame. Mm, this one's sucralose. And he's he drinks one every time I see I'm him. I'm doing all right. And he's still here every Gatorade week. Gatorade Zero. It's only five calories. There we go. So, so yeah, don't be afraid. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Let afraid. us know if it makes you uncomfortable. It might. I'm okay with it. Go have a glass of milk. <laughs> some put some ice cubes in. Yeah. <laughs> don't put ice cubes in your milk. Slice of Just bread. Just keep your milk in the fridge and you'll be fine. Slice of bread. Slice of white bread. Diego gave me some 
Someone made some jalapeno cheddar. Oh, the jalapeno? Cheddar. How was it? Jalapeno cheddar. Was it good? Yeah. I smelled it. Sourdough? It was on the desk mm. when I walked into the gym. I got my own loaf. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm actually about to go have some eggs and sourdough. There it is. Post-workout. That's what Alexis has for dinner every day. Now, no, now she's slowly shifted. It's like it evolves from the same thing, but to she has little grilled cheese sandwiches with the eggs on the side now. Mm. She was having like open face toast like on the broiler and then eggs on top and yep. like veggies on top. But now slowly it's like, yeah, grilled cheese. It's like American cheese slices on the on the bread, a couple of those. And we get that uh, – sh- she that – um. Oh, what's it called? I'm gonna butcher it. It's like five four seven bread or something. Oh, I know you're talking about six. I think six four seven. Yeah, we get the English muffins from yeah. them. They're good and they're like higher fiber. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know you can have more. So if that's important to someone, so it's like yeah, you, you know she has like four slices of bread, so two grilled cheese sandwiches, and then like the eggs and stuff. But yeah, look, you know who? Oh my gosh, bread every day and make you're like healthy and fit and maintain your weight. Yeah, it can happen. If you want to have it. Just you don't do eat, it. like, half a loaf yeah. a day, you know? Keep mm-hmm. it in check. That's all. All right. We appreciate you for listening. All right. We'll catch you next time. See ya. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.